Hi everyone, it's Justine and it's time to review the Met Gala, which took place on the first Monday in May, as it usually does, unless it's 2020 or 2021. <laughs> so this year we're back to the regular calendar. Each Met Gala has a theme and that theme matches the opening of a new exhibition about fashion at the Costume Institute of the Metropolitan Museum in New York. When I review the outfits of that red carpet, it's not so much about who's best dressed as in who is the prettiest, it's more about who actually nailed the theme. And the guests of that special night usually wear outfits that they wouldn't wear on any other red carpet or any other event ever, <laughs> which is why I find this specific night worth a video. I will be giving notes from one to five stars, <laughs> my personal opinion, of course. And just before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about the theme. The theme was, in America, an anthology of fashion. So the word anthology suggests nothing less than the canons of fashion history. Halston in the 60s, Grace Kelly, Hollywood in the 50s, The Great Gatsby in the 20s, Edith Wharton's novels, 1910, and so on. But on the invitations, there was also a clear dress code, gilded glamour and white tie. So the briefing is in fact very clear. It's about that period of industrialization in the United States between roughly 1870 and 1900. So no Halston and no Grace Kelly, wrong decades. For the ladies, that meant a skirt with a bustle, so an increased behind supported by horsehair and petticoats, a corset with a thin waist, bust pushed up, like high up, <laughs> and in the evening, bull gowns showing a cleavage, lace, flowers, ribbons, gloves. For the gentlemen, a coat over a three-piece suit, sometimes a cape as outerwear, an impeccable tie tucked in, and a very white and stiff collar. For formal events, the coats could have a longer tail. At first sight, the theme looks pretty straightforward and not wildly creative because it's a very precisely defined moment somewhere on the fashion timeline. However, this era is also a moment when if you didn't have the right skin tone, you wouldn't have the same rights where the rich were getting insanely rich and the poor, poorer. So we're talking about an era in which society has a huge gap between the rich and the poor and societal conflicts, really. And that opens the door to another potentially more political interpretation of the theme. We shall see which direction the guests went with. Now let's look at the outfits. <laughs> I'm skipping all the zero star outfits, the people who didn't bother to get into the dress code and to do some research. Zero stars, boo, <laughs> not even mentioned. <laughs> I'm starting with one star. Kendall Jenner is wearing a large skirt with ruffles, very dramatic, that's on theme, but the top is too simple and I'm missing some accessories for the era. Anna Wintour surprisingly respected the dress code <laughs> with feathers and embellishments. Normally, she doesn't bother with this, even though she's always the co-host of the evening. Then we have two dresses that are very Hollywood, very lavishly glamorous, but such outfits would actually come in a few decades later in history. And Kim Kardashian is very simple, too simple. Listen, on a night when it's all about big behinds and push-up corsets, you would think that Kim Kardashian has a head start and that she would have a home run at this theme, huh? So I'm a little bit disappointed here, I have to say. Moving on to two stars. Kaya Gerber looks like a debutante at her first ball with beautiful embroidery by Alexander McQueen's ateliers with little buttons, typical of the 19th century. Very well done. Janelle Monet is wearing the stage look of a singer in Gilded New York and the perfect pose to go with it. Miss Hadid, Nicki Minaj, Kylie Jenner, they're all wearing clearly contemporary designs, close to streetwear. And yet, very reminiscent of the proportions of the Gilded Age. Large skirts, bustiers, lace, ruffles. Nicki Minaj heard that the dress code included bustiers and she went all in, all out. Now three stars. Three stars is a great job, okay? It's both on theme and creative already, no question. Cardi B wore a Versace design that required, allegedly, 1,300 hours of embroidery work. Fabulous. Quite decadent and glamorous, very much on theme. Shawn Mendes is an officer from the Civil War, after which the Gilded Era started, so time-wise it's very close. Venice Williams is wearing a sober suit, but with a fitted bustier underneath, with beautiful braids, a necklace that fits right into the era, and eye embellishments and feathers on her purse. For me, this is the most wearable look of the evening, 
that also nails the trend at the same time. Roger Jean Page looks exactly like in Bridgerton. <laughs> He's clearly an expert of historic fashion. Hillary Clinton's dress is sober and comfortable, but very much fitting the theme. Emma Chamberlain's outfit is a deconstructed 19th century inspired top, blouse combined with a super minimalistic modern skirt, very trimmed down to create sartorial contrast. Then come the outfits with four stars. And from this moment onwards, it got really hard to rate and give more or less stars to people because what's better, an outfit that is more historically accurate or a more modern take on tradition? You know, you could pick either way. Here is a board that blinks and must have cost a fortune in metallic threads. Laura Harrier, I apologize if I mispronounce her name, is very classic with pearls and long black gloves. Extremely stylish though. Jessica Chastain is how I imagine Mrs. Vanderbilt hosting a party at her mansion. Very extravagant. On the left, we see a Louis Vuitton design, which is quite impressive because it's lace and embroidery, yes but made decidedly modern through adding leather and using horsehair under the garment to create angles rather than curves. Very innovative. Alicia Keys' cape is an homage to the architecture madness that started in New York in the last decades of the 19th century. Skyscrapers as the new landmarks, art deco design, geometric patterns. The dress on the right feels like liquid gold custom molded on the shoulders, a beautiful Moschino design. And I didn't have enough space on my board, so here is a second one with four stars too. Two gentlemen, one who did the classic frock look with a tail and a stick, and one who hijacked the corsetry from women's wear to create this adjusted jacket, very well fitted, compliments to the tailor. Bella Hadid and Paloma Elzesser have taken off the dress, kind of, and are displaying their undergarments, sulfurous and very glamorous. Bella Hadid looks like a scandalous actress, who is also the mistress of a rich and famous banker from Manhattan, like in Bridgerton, but three decades later in history, if you see what I mean. And last but not least, Blake Lively's dress by Ralph Lauren is fabulous. The pattern reminds you of the architecture and aesthetics of the city at that time. The copper color of the bow detail on her hip looks like the copper you'd expect in the luxury interior of that era. And under the bow, there's in fact a second dress in the dress, which has the blue green of the copper once oxidation has kicked in. Aesthetically, it's amazing. And the handcraft is absolutely fabulous. And now five stars. This year, many gentlemen did a fantastic job at playing the dress code, so I decided to split one board for the ladies, one board for the gents. Billie Eilish is wearing an outfit that is historically quite accurate, and yet she manages to make it more modern, thanks to the accessories, the haircut, of course, and the attitude. She's totally feeling it, right? Another Bridgerton cast member, rocking feathers and crystal embellishments, sometime in the 19th century, I would need to check when exactly, synthetic dyes were invented. From that point on, bright colors were actually possible. So towards the end of the century, you would indeed see bright pinks, greens, etc. Macy Williams has, in my opinion, the best take of the evening on a déshabillé on an undergarment look. It's by Thumb Brownie, who designed quite a few looks this year, and who happens to also be the partner of the curator of the Costume Institute of the Met. Coincidence? Coincidence. Courtney Kardashian is taking menswear and showing the process behind the garment. The work of the tailor, drawing on the fabric with chalk to fit the garment onto the client. An homage to the people who make the clothes. And then Sarah Jessica Parker, she's always on point. She always researches her outfits extremely well. This time she worked with Christopher John Rogers, who just got elected designer of the year for women's wear in the US. I think the result is brilliant. The overall look is, is amazing. And there is a headpiece. I was surprised not to see more headpieces or tiaras, as women in the Gilded Age would usually not go out bareheaded. Now onto the gentlemen. On the left, Stromae, wearing an embroidered cape and a fabulous tie, which is in fact a piece of Cartier jewelry. A longer cape in electric blue, very chic. A full tuxedo look with a stick. And laurels, because... That's him. <laughs> Billy Eilish's brother, wearing Gucci like her. He's that decadent, tormented artist who would drink the nights away in the 19th century. I'm loving this pleated jacket and undone tie look. 
The last two, Lenny Kravitz and even Mock, are blurring the lines of gender, using design details from women's wear and, and lace, tailoring from men's wear and silk. It's creative, surprising, and I think an excellent job from the designers. This year, I'm adding a special mention to the guests who took a more political stand. Two of them, but there were more, are Cynthia Erivo and Riza Med. The first one is wearing a headpiece, which is fabulous, <laughs> which is reminiscent of what black women would wear in the 1800s in the US. The white garment is suggesting clearly the poor life conditions and wardrobes that these women had, but here for the event it's executed with lace and feathers. Incredible um, design work. It's a dress by Louis Vuitton. And Riz Ahmed said that he came as a worker, as in the workers who labored in the fields and in the mines behind the scenes to make the incredible wealth of the Gilded Era possible. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this review. Thank you very much. Which one is your favorite among all these outfits? Is there a nice one that you think I missed and that should have been on the list? Let me know down below in the comments. There has been some controversy, I have to add, to conclude and give you a full picture, around the choice of the dress code. Some people said that it felt completely disconnected to talk about gilded glamour, when at the same time in the real world there is a pandemic, inflation, a war, recession, etc. But on the other hand, I have to say, the Met Gala themes are chosen way ahead of time. It never was an event on the pulse of time. Um, it's something in its own world, so to speak. And also the guests are people who can afford a $35,000 ticket and a completely custom-made couture gown. So um, it never was a relatable event, if I may say so. It's more on the aspirational side. I will see you very soon in a new video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe so that you get notifications when a new video goes up. Take care and goodbye.